click on SIM. So SIM actually serves a dual purpose. We have confirmatory factor analysis here, but I'll show you that you can actually do both with just the SIM. We try to be smart and help users out as much as we can. So, um, so this is just a generic data set, so I'm afraid I won't have a very uh, nice story to tell here, but I can demonstrate how you would use it. So let me slow down a little bit. So what, I've, what, what we have here is just a few different inputs. So we have, this is pretty much most of what you'll be interacting with is the latent variables tab. This is where you add your latent constructs and decide which indicator or manifest variables are going to be associated with it. You can also uh, specify if you would like uh, covariances between indicators or latent variables. And you can also apply constraints if you want to fix a loading or if you'd like to uh, make sure that you constrain a variance or a covariance to one or something like that, which is also how you would standardize variables in Intellectus. So just to get started, I'll add a few latent variables. Okay. So the first one I'll add is just a LV1 and I'll just add some variables to it. <clears throat> Okay, and we'll add a few more. Okay, so at this point, this is actually a valid model. We don't have any regressions yet, so it's not a uh, structural equation model yet, but we can just go ahead and click preview and it should run. And this is just us identifying that you don't have regressions, so we run it as a confirmatory factor analysis instead. So you get multiple pages here uh, as you look at the preview. The first page we display is uh, modification indices. So this just is kind of indicative of how well your model is fitting. If you have really uh, large modification indices, it indicates that there are some constraints that are very difficult to for the model to fit, and uh, that adding some covariance parameter between items will uh, help the model to fit better in some cases. But uh, usually, as you probably already know, you don't want to be doing that unless you have a good reason, because it's uh, just bad for your theory. So. We'll just go look at uh, what else we have. So we have some fit indices as well. And we uh, provide the scrollovers to help identify what values you'd be looking for for a good fit for these. And uh, it looks like we have fair fit, not great. And on the next page, we have a uh, path diagram, which shows you the relationships visually. So it's a little hard to read. Uh, the, these computer generated path diagrams are not always the best, but hopefully they provide enough information that you can use Microsoft PowerPoint or something and create a nicer looking one. So, and uh, if we just add some regressions, we can convert the confirmatory factor analysis into a structural equation model. So let's just choose our first latent variable as the dependent variable and We'll have the other two predict it. And you can also uh, have mediation and moderation paths as well. So you just click these, it will add additional <laughs> inputs for you to specify those relationships. So now we can preview again. And uh, we should have the same fit statistics for the model, but now we will have the addition of regression paths in our path diagram here. So um, before we conduct, I wanted to demonstrate what I was talking about. So I can re-add these regressions, but I know that I can do it if I remove them because uh, I did it earlier when I was practicing this. So let's say that we do add one of those constraints. So let's add this one for instance. So all that's doing is adding a, a covariance between reading three and four which appears here now. But now if we preview by doing that, 
ah, okay, this is what I was referring to. So now we've listed a warning to let the user know that something is going on with the model. And in this case, it's a Haywood case, which happens when you have a, a negative variance estimate, which is just caused by poor model fit. It, the maximum likelihood algorithm tries to fit the model. It can't. The only way that it can possibly get the data to fit is to make one of the variances negative, which of course is impossible. So we, uh, that's called the Haywood case. We warn the user about it and we let them know. Reason in this case is because of high multicollinearity between some of the indicators. And that's uh, really indicating that some of your indicators are not capturing unique variants. They are capturing the same variants. And they're so correlated that in fact, maybe you should just be dropping some or combining them as a composite variable before using them or something of that nature. With most of these errors, we also have a, a little um, button to learn more about it. So you can click here and it explains uh, the various types of errors that you might get within a, a SEM model. So this is that negative error variances, uh, which is what I was describing. Um, you can have non-positive degrees of freedom, perfect multicollinearity, et cetera. And so we explain a lot of those. Okay, so let's actually conduct this, but I will add my regressions back and I'll remove that term. Okay, there we go. So uh, yeah, it explains the SIM model that was conducted, the latent variables, and uh, what we're doing is determining if it adequately describes the data. Okay, so uh, the assumptions are the same as what you've seen in some previous analyses. So we have the multivariate normality plot, which looks really good here. And uh, we look at some multivariate outliers. Uh, this is done just by calculations. We so we look at these Mahalanobis distances and we determine uh, which ones were greater than the threshold value, which is a 26.12, and we didn't find any in this case. Multicollinearity. So you want them to be somewhat correlated, but uh, you don't want them to be too highly correlated as we saw before. And uh, as the warning indicated, we have these reading one, two, three, and four math scores and science scores, um, have extremely high multicollinearity. Uh, we look at the determinant, which is very small, almost zero. So if we were to look at the correlation matrix, we'd probably see <clears throat> correlations of well above 0.90, but maybe close to one. But we can still look at the results. So uh, we look at the re reliability of the data and uh, evaluate the goodness of fit using a chi-square test present all that information in this table. So we can see here we have our regression paths and um, unstandardized standardized estimates with the significance value. And uh, one of the regressions was significant. So our second latent variable predicted the first one, the second one did not. We have our covariances and, you know, despite having high multicollinearity, the fit is actually okay for this model. So it's fortuitous that I happen to pick those variables. We, here we have the correlation table for the latent variables themselves. And we can see that actually it makes sense that the correlation is almost one between the first and second latent variables because of the significant regression, as we can see here. And um, Let's see, we evaluate the sample size. We just use a gen general rule looking for 300 around, but uh, you wanna, it, really we break down by how many parameters are being estimated and what kind of sample size you'd like to have given your number of parameters that your model is estimating. So we explain that ratio here. You want about 20 to one. Uh, different authors suggest different ratios. So we just list multiple opinions. And then uh, we indicate 
what the ratio was for this analysis, which was about seven to one, which is acceptable according to Bentler and Cho, but not necessarily other authors. Explain the model fit. So the chi-square test is almost always significant, but we report it anyway because of how common it is. And uh, here it's showing that it's highly significant, indicating poor model fit, but it's very sensitive as uh, you all know. Um, fit indices, this is just indicating the same as what we saw in the preview, explaining which values you're looking for, uh, which threshold, threshold you're looking for and what the values are. And actually they're, they're doing well, they're high enough to consider the model to be well fitting. And then those are presented in a table as well. And then finally, we consider the R squared of each individual item in the model. So that includes the R squared for the regression here, which was almost perfectly predicted due to the high correlation. So that uh, specifically the second latent variable, LV2, predicted almost 100% of the variance in latent variable one. And then it breaks that down by the individual items as well, which all had extremely high R squared values. And uh, then finally, we actually interpret the regressions in a similar way to the linear regression.